Rockwell's work was um, very literal. And he painted mm -hmm. things that he saw. Do you think it's more of a challenge for today's artists to, <clears throat> or illustrators to, to do the same thing that he did, but they, it's, it's not literal, it's, it's um, you mean interpretive. Well, something that doesn't have an idea, uh, a strong concept, but it's more just a, a, a fine painting that interprets the thing. You think? It, you wonder if it's more of a challenge? Is it more of a challenge for mm -hmm. illustrators today? To do that kind of work, or just to work? T to do what they need to do for today's publications. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. I, I, it's, I, I, I don't, I'm not sure, but I, I think the way my mind works fits really well for today's kind of illustration, uh, you know, that concept kind of thing. But, uh, I mean, Rockwell had to, had to consider all kinds of things when he painted. I mean, he had, to, he had to get all the scrap, he had to get photos. I think it was an incredible challenge for him to do something that was heartwarming uh, and yet not saccharine. I mean, because I, I consider him a sentimental artist. I, I mean, uh, like I love, and maybe if I were to do a trade, I would rather a Marshall Arisman, you know. But I love his work, and, and you know, you can see in the other rooms, <coughs> his stuff is so, um, so beautiful. I mean, everything. Like someone on the phone, I just love the way he has a like, person on the phone, and the way the hands are, and e everything is done to the nth degree. He doesn't. You can look. You can focus down his thing and watch everything. The watch fob, the vest, the way it fits. There's nothing wrong with it. It's all perfect. I mean, once in a while, it's not. And you almost can tell when some of his later work when he almost felt like he was doing it to get the job done, like maybe for Pfizer. Who knows? Yeah. But his best work is just. Unbelievable how he worked all that stuff out and got the right models and then changed them to get the right thing. So I don't think it's any harder today. But to uh, it's just to different. To your point, it's different, right? Um, I I think that to your point, Elwood's style uh, and approach much more represents what um, is current today. That Rockwell's style would not be in keeping with contemporary audiences in, in a lot of ways. I mean, we live in this world where. You know, images are flashed on the screen. You know, we see I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of images a day, and um, I think this you know beautiful direct method of expression with strong concept behind it. Um, you know, and if you look around the room, well, it's reflected in a lot of what's here. That um, that that approach really does reflect today's reader, today's viewer. Um, I think in a different way. But but there are people like Anita's in the other room, right? Anita Kuntz? Uh, Anita's not. But oh, there's oh, one oh. artist, Gregory Manchus. But there which, was another, uh, Mark Albertson? Mm -hmm. Here. Or Teresa uh, This is certainly different than Rockwell, but it's, you can consider it sort of realistic painting sure. yeah. uh, of a similar nature. Um, and, and she's very popular in this she is. work all the time. She does a lot of um, book jacket illustration. And in fact, the, the piece that you see here was actually a jacket for a, a garden, um, complete vegetable gardener's handbook. Mm. Yes, yeah, so you can see where the text is going to go. Yes, exactly. Worked out perfectly. That's an interesting yes. thing you say that. Sometimes when I have to work for a show, uh, as long as you don't know quite how to crop it, if I've done a cover, and there's a bunch of illustration here, and then there's something up here, and there's kind of, well, well the, the Truth About Poop book that I did, there's a, a rear view of an elephant, and he's holding this paper, and the text goes on that. But when you see the illustration by itself, it, it's kind of boring up there, and you wouldn't necessarily have that blank space. So when you have a show, well, Rockwell did some, too, sometimes. You'll have a, a space where you know something belongs there. Something that's going to go. Mm -hmm. So that, that is a kind of a challenge to work around. Mm -hmm. some, Find the time frame with the technology and the quickness of production that it would be prohibitive yes. for somebody to work in Rockwell style like in today's work. world. Yes. Those are yeah. weeks of work, yeah. on especially those oil painting. You know, it takes a long to dry and everything. Right. But, um, Actually, weeks, months, and sometimes even years. In fact, Upjohn was petitioning mm -hmm. Rockwell for um, his final painting for about five years because he was so busy, and then of course he'd work on it a little bit and then he'd put it away. So. But I think the, the demand and the art director turnaround, you know, 
He couldn't meet that deadline of yours. You can't do well. Uh, that's he couldn't yeah, meet that hours. deadline of yours. No. <laughs> no. But you know, I think he could have done a little pencil sketch or something. Yeah. Uh, I was talking about how it, his work is very, um, his, some of his work is very cartoony, and I, I thought sometimes it would be fun to put together a little show of maybe some Jack Davis and, and, and show a connection because his, some of the things he did were very, well, a lot of his work is very stylized, but some of it was very cartoony, whatever that term means. Super skinny arms with big hands and, and big feet, just like, I don't know if you know Jack Davis is, but he was one of the Mad Magazine cartoons that I love very much. And, and the kind of, he would do the kind of feet that had the, they're kind of long and little skinny ankles. And, and Rockwell did exactly that kind of thing. In some of his pencil studies that he did in that style, uh, and he was such a draftsman, I think he could have met that deadline. Uh, doing something like that, you know, not, yeah. actually not oil painting, but doing all those little studies, probably would. Uh, but whether you can think of the, the idea of a clown sitting there and everything, I, I, who knows? Uh, but we, we have different, you know, illustrators have different <coughs> strengths, and, and there are certain illustrators I look at, like Teresa, and I'm in awe of what they do, a realistic style. I, I wish I could paint, but I can't paint, and I don't paint, and I don't really have any interest in doing it, but I, I admire it so much, Peter Desev. A lot of times when I sit down to do a drawing, my mind says, ah, oh. I've said to Maggie many times, ah, oh, this would be such a great job for Peter Desev. Peter's work is actually over but here funny. in the But, um, but I have, you know, I have the assignment, not Peter, so I have to do, but I have to put out of my mind that I'm gonna be able to render like this, you know. I, that's how I would love to be able to do watercolor. But obviously not enough to take a watercolor class and, and learn to do it. it it's, it's not what I'm really interested in, even though I admire it like crazy. I mean, I, I'm in awe of someone who works like that, but um, I, I traded in original with, with Peter. We're both fans of each other's work, so I think he probably feels the same way about my work. He probably thinks, oh, if I could just get that little zany line and those, that dandruff falling off, it would be so great. Can you talk a little about the fine line, especially with your work between an illustrator and a cartoonist? Because sometimes it seems like you're bridging that gap. Yeah, I'm often referred to as a cartoonist, and, and I'm not offended. I, it, uh, it's just that I'm not because I don't, I don't do a panel. Mm -hmm. I don't do, do gag cartoons. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think up, I think up ideas bouncing off something, but I don't do cartoons. I don't think of self-contained jokes and do a drawing for it. So in that way, I, I consider myself an illustrator who works in cartoon style. And it's kind of semantics. You know, if someone calls me a cartoonist, I, I just, uh, in fact, so many people have said, uh, oh, I've seen your stuff in the New Yorker. And I've never done anything for the New Yorker because I don't think of ideas. Uh, and also, People who cartoonists think up ideas and they submit it, and then they get rejects. Like they'll send a dozen, you know, every week they send a dozen gags, and then they get rejected until finally they're accepted. And uh, I've been working as an illustrator on assignment, so I get paid, like on that one that they bounced, the, may have bounced the sketch, but I came up with the clown. I would have gotten kill fee if I chose at that point just to back off. So I only work, you know, it's just how I've been doing it all these years, work by assignment. Uh, not speculative, and it's a different mindset. Uh, maybe if when I was in art school and went out, if I pursued gay cartooning, I would have been good at it, or maybe not, but I didn't. I, Perhaps it's a perspective of the viewer that they see your work and they see it as a cartoon, they don't have it delineated as right. clearly that, right. oh, well, this is a cartoon and this is not. Exactly, that's like a when I first started getting into bluegrass, I, I, I played guitar and mandolin. And <clears throat> when I first got interested in that, I thought all that stuff was bluegrass, but I soon found out, if you talk to someone that knows bluegrass, there's old timey, and there's, and, there's, and there's traditional bluegrass, and there's contemporary bluegrass, and there's supergrass, and I mean, there's this, you go, well, excuse me, I didn't know that I was stepping on toes here uh, by calling that bluegrass. So, Anything you get in the area, and typography or anything, I'm sure there are people that are going to know a lot more than you know, and they start really caring deeply about full pause. <laughs> but I don't mind being a 
call the judges. I do Thank talk, you don't so I? Thank you so much. <laughs> it was so wonderful to have you.